What's happening my friends? Hey, so coming to you today with an experiment video and this video is going to be focused on how to sterilize grain spawn or sterilize grain to create grain spawn using a pressure cooker and using an Instapot. So what I want to do is compare the results between using an Instapot which is something that's much more common, much easier to get our hands on than a pressure cooker. And the inspiration for doing this video is I've had a lot of questions about, uh, hey, can I sterilize in my Instapot? And I've almost always said no, don't, uh, don't do that because it doesn't get up to a high enough temperature. And I'm basing that off of steam tables. So uh, if you're not an engineer and you're not familiar with steam tables, basically as in a closed system like a pressure cooker or an Instapot, the, as the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up, and the pressure and temperature are directly correlated to each other. So, uh, for example, at atmospheric pressure, so just an open pot of water in the room, uh, that will boil at 212 degrees, but if I put a lid on that and I seal it, the boiling point goes up until it reaches a certain pressure and then boiling happens there. So. Uh, without getting too deep into the science on that, the reason why I've never recommended using an Instapot in the past is because on the standard Instapot, the Duo, the pressure only gets up to 11.6 psi. And if you're familiar with pressure cooking or sterilizing in a pressure cooker, we're usually going up to 15 psi. And the difference there is about 10 degrees. So at 15 psi, we're talking uh, about 250 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm sorry I didn't look at what that is in Celsius and I can't do the math in my head right now. For 11.6 psi which the Instapot runs at that's around 240 degrees so there's about a 10 degree difference there. So to me that doesn't seem significant. 240 degrees versus 250 degrees yeah, it's a little bit, it's 10 degrees off, but is it enough to make a difference? I don't think so. So what I'm gonna do is I have a big batch of grain ready to go uh, in the sterilizer or in the uh, pressure cooker, and then three jars to go into my Instant Pot. And I'm gonna mark those ones off uh, separately, but I'm gonna inoculate them with the same spawn, with the same, uh, uh, so I'm using oyster, uh, grain spawn that I have from a previous project. So that oyster spawn is going to go into all the jars, the same spawn, and I just want to see will the Instapot uh, jars perform the same as the pressure cooker jars? And uh, will they get contaminated or will they start growing microbes that we don't want to grow there? I suspect the answer is going to be it will be just fine. Uh, however, to make this a little bit more possible to succeed, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to run the Instant Pot at uh, max pressure, which is 11.6 PSI, and I'm going to do that for 90 minutes instead of the standard 60 that I do in the pressure cooker. If you don't have to go buy a pressure cooker to do small batches, then you can just use your Instant Pot and that'd be great. Also, just want to take a moment to make two quick announcements uh, and this is about monetization of this channel so as you are aware or as you may have noticed on old videos of mine there are advertisements so through adsense through google uh, you know whatever system google uses to put advertisements on my videos i get a percentage of that money and to be honest i have felt really I haven't felt great about this uh, for a few reasons and I don't want to get into those there. So what I want to do is from here on out, every video that I post, I'm going to have it not monetized, meaning I will not be getting any ad revenue from Google from these videos. And to me, this just feels more in alignment with my values. So you might ask, well, hey, Jared, how are you going to financially support the work you're doing? The model I want to move to is give what you think this is worth. And I'm going to do that on Patreon. 
So I'm not going to offer a lot of extra goodies and gifts on Patreon. I'm going to have a very basic membership, or actually I already do have a very basic membership on Patreon. And what I would ask is if you enjoy the work that I'm doing here, if you're learning something from it, and it's worth something to you financially, please contribute on Patreon. And if Patreon is not a model that works for you, I'll also use a direct contribution, and I'm going to put the links to all this below. So a direct contribution model where it's not a subscription like it is on Patreon. It would be great if I could have your financial support in this. All right, let's get to work. So just a quick view of what I got going. Three jars in the Instapot and a lot more jars in the big pressure cooker. Um, yeah, let's do it. So I inoculated these instant pot jars and the pressure cooker jars about 13 days ago. And they're at a point now that I'm considering fully colonized. And so I wanted to show you the results. So this one here is an instant pot jar. And this one here is a pressure cooker jar. And there's no difference. They both colonize completely fine. They colonize at the same speed. There was no contamination in any one of these jars. And so I think it worked. I mean, it looks like it worked to me. So what I want to do is do a little bit more experimenting with this. Going grain to grain is usually a pretty sure bet anyways, especially with an oyster mushroom. Oyster strains tend to go really fast. Uh, they colonize really fast. There's such a voracious variety of mushroom that you really can't go wrong with it. And what I'll do is I'll publish this video just to get the results out there of this experiment. And then as I develop my own little procedure here for using the Instant Pot, I will make a new video that just details the procedure. And also, uh, once that procedure's up, I'll post it on my website, wonderthmushrooms.com. A quick plug of that website. Uh, if you have any interest in growing in a monotub, there's a calculator up there that helps you uh, determine how much substrate to use and the exact recipe for uh, pretty much everything you'll need to grow out a monotub. That's completely free. Uh, the only the only cost is the time that it takes for you to go onto the website. All right, well, I'll see you soon with that procedure video, and until then, have fun growing mushrooms. Bye.